Hi loves, today we are talking skincare and beauty and I'm so excited to tell you who I have here. This is my longtime girlfriend and beauty expert, Alexandra Petora, creator of Rhea Cosmetics. I know that beauty and skincare hasn't been your career your whole life, right. basically. Right. How did you get into it? And even though I wasn't in beauty um, throughout my career, it was still like a side passion of mine. And I liked feel, looking good because when you look good, you feel good. I mean, let's be honest. Yes, true. And uh, in terms of skincare, I, I remember always saying, man, I feel so bad for those of us who have acne skin and rosacea and eczema. And then what happens to me at 22? Full-fledged acne skin. Mm -hmm. And it just got so bad. And so skincare became a must for me. I, I had to learn how to take care of my skin. Tell me how important, first of all, like a skin routine is. And I'd love your three top tips for anti-aging. Okay, yeah, so every skin type is very different. I mean, you, you go from the production, the amount of sebum that you produce in your skin to the size of your pores, which no, you cannot get rid of. You cannot close your pores. You cannot minimize your okay, pores. Okay, that's great information. No, it's I not. Know. That's misleading. How oh your pores, the size of your pores is in very large part uh, dictated by um, your genetic coding. Okay, so let's, okay. the only thing that you can do is kind of min minimize their appearance. Okay. Which okay. can be misleading and people think, oh, I can minimize. No, just by keeping them clean and they, instead of continuing to expand, they kind of remain at the same size but okay. okay so pore size the amount of oil that we produce but genetic encoding how we're you know predicted to age um how we treat our body the kind of environment and lifestyle that we're part of and whatnot all those play a, a key factor so uh, ingredients is a big thing for me ingredients are you into organic all natural or are you thank you for that? asking this yes. question organic natural are now like creating my own product uh -huh. i okay. have been learning a lot of things and the organic and natural markets are the most unregulated markets. So when you think that you're getting something that's natural, well, it natural like arsenic is natural. Yes. N natural doesn't mean good, and uh, that's a common misconception. I've actually been reading a lot about this too. Yeah, it can actually scary. be more damaging to it's your more skin. It's detrimental yeah. to your skin. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then you don't want to put preservatives. Well, then you're gonna put rotten product on your skin, and that's really bad. <laughs> like ingredients like hyaluronic acid and urea. Yeah. Hyaluronic acid and urea, they're both humectants. They're both part of your natural mo moisturizing factor in your body. Your body produces them. So it's not like you're adding some foreign, you know, product into mm -hmm. your skin. Now they can be synthetically made and, and very easily, you know, a good lab can accomplish great results. I swear, my nighttime routine takes longer than my morning routine getting ready because it's just like serums and lotions and cleansers and Well, it's something that you've adapted to because you're a mom. So in the yes. morning, you, you don't have the luxury to exactly. spend like 30 right. minutes on your skincare. Exactly. So what takes longer for you, getting ready nighttime. in the morning or nighttime? It's I do my funny. microcurrent that yes. takes like 15 minutes. Yeah, I'll tell you about it. You're religious about your microcurrent. I'm religious I about know. microcurrent. And I think that's a huge, huge anti-aging yeah. secret that nobody really knows about. And I just discovered probably a year ago. Yeah, so I would say to answer your question, like the top three anti-aging, I would say ingredients. In terms of ingredients, mm -hmm. the absolute bare bones that in yes. my opinion you need are hyaluronic acid, okay. vitamin C, retinol, sunscreen. Oh and my gosh, yes. Yes. Even when you're staying home 365 or sometimes 366 days a year. <laughs> and uh, let's not forget. And a good exfoliant, ideally a chemical exfoliant. If you have normal combo skin, um, a uh, glycolic acid is good. If you have really oily, acne-prone skin, uh, out, like a glycolic salicylic will work. If you have sensitive skin, a lactic or a, or a malic acid will help. But chemical exfoliation, retinol, SPF, vitamin C, hyaluronic acid, the five pillars, you cannot miss this. Never really together. I mean, you're not going to put a salicylic acid exfoliation with a, um, retinol. a retinol. Yeah. Yes. Retinol. Yeah, exactly. That's too so, intense. Yeah. You'll peel a lot with retinols. Like you have yes. to be really careful. Yes. And, you know, go to your dermatologist or, Always. you know, and get and like have them plan out something Always. for like you. That's sharing is our yeah. experience, yes. but it's not, you know, you need to consult with a doctor. Because yes. some people's skin 
is so sensitive. I have yes. super sensitive skin, so I have to be really careful yeah. in what I put on my skin because I just get immediately yeah. break out or get a rash yeah. or or we're simply using just moderately active products, but we're using them in a wrong combination. Okay, so what is the youngest age to Ooh, start skincare? Good question. You should start from like with Kensington right now. In three and years. sunscreen is a game changer. Yeah. When I started religiously using sunscreen, it let your spots on your face mm -hmm. lighten up. Like things mm -hmm. get tighter, your fine lines kind of go away. Mm -hmm. Just with sunscreen. Yeah. Just because you're not getting that that sun Continuous, damage. Yeah. yeah just like, What's too early? for Botox and fillers, do you think? That's a really good question. And honestly, it depends from person to person. Do you think I like teenagers are too young yeah, for it? Yeah. Okay, yeah. like 20s. Yeah, you. I, in my opinion, you should be in yeah. your 20s unless it's something that is so critical and your doctor suggests, yeah, exactly. hey, you know, you should use some Botox. Yeah. Until you start seeing um, lines yeah. on your forehead, you do not need yeah. it. And so he, I think I got Botox at like 25. Was the first I time. started at 28. Yeah. 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 That, I think Columbia University was one of them that put out a really robust paper making an argument as to why Botox can be used for almost anti-aging purposes. Because, you know, you do this to your skin over and over and over and over again, it will leave that little crinkle. But if you don't allow the skin to cons to do this as much, you know, those you're still going to get the wrinkles, but they won't be so deeply set in, the, exactly. you know. So in a sense, it yeah. does have have some form of, you know, um, anti, yeah, pre yes, yeah, preventative, more youthful yeah, exactly. aging. But I would say teenagers too young, um, mid to late twenties. Yep. Okay. So what is the biggest skin myth that you have ever heard of? More silicones are bad in skincare. Oh, I can't yes, even yes. begin with this FDA approved is uh, silicone in cosmetic for cosmetic use is just fine. It's not going to be for all skin types, but it's just fine. In fact, silicone for for many skin types has been shown to be able to retain moisture levels, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Like it's fantastic as well as hair. Okay. Um, there's not no robust evidence that says silicones are bad. And one one of the things that I've noticed, and this is why I wanted to start my own company, I, I started noticing this trend of misinformation and mm -hmm. demonizing one ingredient. This way you can advertise, oh, your company doesn't have it, so you shouldn't buy from them, you should buy from me. Mm -hmm. It's a marketing tactic and we keep falling for it. So I, that's a myth, silicones are bad for you. And another one, and I'm only referring to it even though it's hair, it's because I do shave my face. Oh, I, I do too. That's actually one of my favorite things Isn't to do. Isn't this amazing? Yeah. I, I'm so glad the, the cat is out of the... I didn't yeah. know you were shaving. Yeah. Dermaplaning, Dermaplaning and... Dermaplaning. Yeah, Dermaplaning. yeah. But I yeah. actually do I do that as well as shave at home. Too, I, I have the twinkle razors. I don't do... I do a man's oh, razor. Do. I is that better? Over. For me, it is because it's meant for the face. Yes. To me, the, the little twinkle ones is just right. another off-marketing kind of. Like, oh, let me just sell some, you know. Okay. It's trying to mimic the I'm going to steal one. Sean's razors now. Oh, to yeah. shave oh, my no, face no, for sure yeah. like it takes your mask yeah. i pop in my own like, blade and i'm like we gotta go. like we're not saying like we shave like here we shave like the whole, the face, whole face everywhere yeah, yeah. like never, your forehead yeah never that that razor does not touch any other part of the body that's yeah. no one. just and it has to be super sharp as well super sharp yes. um but be so touch. careful yes. oh my god go yes. slow yes yeah like there's like you know we're not going to talk about that today but it's just still like and and make sure you don't shave over like yeah. active acne break anyway yeah. there's like a there's a lot to it, yeah. but I'm just saying, yeah. I'm going to mention this because I do shave my face. Yeah. And one of them. How, wait, how often? Like, how often? I do it every month, once a month. Once a month. Yeah. Okay, I was going to say, I thought you were going to say every morning. I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. no. I mean, no, we I, haven't elevated I, there. Yeah, I do mine about once a month too. I'm yeah. actually due for it. Pretty soon. I know it's been actually over a month yeah, for me. Exactly. But, and that's see, it, we yeah. don't like have extra hair growing. Well, anything. that is a myth. And yeah. that's why I wanted to address that because I do shave my face and um, I've made a couple of videos about it and I get annihilated by every hair, apparently, expert out there who tells me, oh, you're going to have a beard by the time you're 40. Well, first of all, that's only four years away for me. So <laughs> She's like, I don't think it's starting. I don't think it's going to start now. But um, the way hair grows, and, and this is a message that I want to put out there, is it's your DNA dictates yes. how, you, how you're, the size of your pores, how your hair grows, et cetera, et cetera. How your hair grows is dictated internally by your genetic encoding. Now, 
you can argue that, well, it does feel blunt. Well, yes, it does feel blunt because you're cutting off that tip. Give it a couple of days and that tip will exactly. grow back. Um, unless you have, you know, an, an internal imbalance and PCOS and other things, then normal, like a normal folk out there should not feel the stubbliness. Yes, you exactly. know, unless you have a disease and, and many of my really good friends have that, so they cannot shave oh. because they, they have a lot of growth and they need laser and other things like that. Yes. But the average folks should not yeah. feel any of that. Yeah. And then, you know, you can argue, well, it is darker in color. It got it got darker. No, it didn't get darker. The hair that you already have that you see right now on your skin is simply exposed to UVs, to pollution, to your ear. I mean, look where we live, the smog, the everything. So it's going to alter the color. How it comes out is your actual natural hair color. Give it a little bit and then, you know, it will lighten up from the sun, from the UV exposure, yep, etc. exactly. This is going to be hard for you. Oh, one product. Oh. One. You have to pick one that you will never, ever, 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 ever give up. A, okay, I have two. I, I gotta okay. go with two. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. Two, I can't. Two. I can't. I can't. Um, the multimolecular hyaluronic acid from NIOD. Okay. It's the same company, Desium, that uh, produces the ordinary. It's okay. the same parent company. I will be tagging this. <laughs> okay. yes. The multi. They have 50 molecular weights of hyaluronic acid, which means that it's going to be penetrated di differently. Oh it's going to have like multiple layers of effectiveness. I'm all about that. Wow. Science. Science. And um, my my microcurrent tool, my I new know. face that you always see, I'm I like know. always like, I swear that I was getting like really bad jowls. Yeah. I swear, okay? And it's not that bad anymore because I do it like six days a week. Six do days you a week really? for 15 to 20 minutes at night. She has an amazing cosmetics and mm. skincare line yeah. coming out called Vrea. You know, from 31 to 32, so many things are happening to your skin. Yes. Well, my skin started having different needs. So I thought to myself, well, I want to find makeup that will actively do good things for my skin as well. So I found several brands out there and I started using them. But I started kind of, I don't know, being a little frustrated by the claims that were being made. Well, 99% mm -hmm. of women notice this. I'm like, okay, but where are your, where's your claims data? And I would reach out to these brands and they would tell me, sorry, we cannot disclose that. You would think that I would ask them for their underwear size. Right. Like, you need to tell me where you live. Yeah. You know, it's like, sorry, I can't tell you. What do you mean you can't tell me? I'm a consumer. I can report you. What do you yeah, mean? What exactly. is this? What's happening? I started realizing, well, it's the false kind of narrative that is out there. Oh, we have like vitamin C in our, yeah, it's like at the bottom. Bottom. And that's not necessarily a bad thing because sometimes a 0.1% of an ingredient can be just the perfect, you know, to get those benefits. But okay, but how much are you like? If this is your star ingredient, can you tell us like, how is it like a two percent? Is it like a you know? So I know, is it too much? Because too much of something good is also very bad. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm looking for in skincare mm -hmm. brands as well, or in cosmetic yeah, brands as yeah, well. Exactly. Like, like I want something this. that is going to be helping me while I'm wearing it because you are wearing makeup all day. All day. Exa you, you, exactly. You you do your skincare routine, but then you put your makeup on, and then you go to work, yeah. and then you're with your makeup on all day. It's so important. It's yeah. so important. So anyway, so. I decided, you know what, I'm just going to do this. I'm going to start a makeup company that has active skincare ingredients. And it, it's a practically like skincare, like active skincare, but with color yeah. that performs like high quality makeup. Yes. And is it a mastiche price? Yes. You know, okay. like something that you would get from an Ulta, not something that you exactly. get from, I don't know, like. You know, it, it appeals to the masses it appeals, exactly. and everyone can afford it. Exactly. Yes. So most. most cosmetic brands have In the same opinion, formulas. Yeah. They just add. Relatively. Added. Yes. Yes. Take so a manufacturer will make it and that's your base formula. And then you take it, twink it a little bit and you go to, yeah. Ooh. Now, of course, every manufacturer has different bases, uh -huh. you know, but that's very common, which is why you come out in nine months to a year. Because think about it, wow. you know, it, it, when you... I'm mind blown. Oh, I didn't no, know that. Mine was too. And I'm like, wait, what? Yeah. And I kept telling my following, all my friends online, it's like, oh, we're going to come out. We're going to shoot for a year and a half. There is no reason why we yeah. cannot. And then it's like, oh, wait, my bad. Yeah. <laughs> it turns out that when you want to innovate, you have to follow testing protocols that need to happen. You don't have oh, to do that yeah. if because they already have the base. They've they already, already tested did it. it. You know, I mean, unless you're making significant modifications to it, there's no reason. The only testing that you do is just like your perception test, you know, oh the gosh. functionality of it. Like, does it, you know, like, how interesting. And yeah, and I'm, and I'm super pumped. There's legitimately, like, especially this first product that we're launching, there's nothing like it on the market. And um, I'm so it's, happy it's, for you. It's going to be pretty freaking special. So when do you think? What are you, another year or two? March? No, uh, at this point, we're, we're on target for March 2021. <gasps> 
Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm really excited yeah, for you so, and so inspiring. So you guys need to head over to her her social media. Thank she you. has an amazing Instagram, super interesting. She covers like A to Z. Thank you I so try. much for coming and being here. So Thank you for having me. Yes. Bye, everybody. Bye, you guys. Bye.